What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com. Yes, I've got a little bit of raspy voice that my wife personally finds more sexy than my normal voice. So you guys are in for a treat. Today, we're going to talk all about how to reduce churn, how to increase that engagement. I want to talk all about the features. Personally, I love this topic because I tend not to focus on this. I tend to focus more on the monetization side of things because I feel like monetization drives engagement. So let's see what my guest says when he hears that. But our guest today is Almar Reyes. He's the former director of audience engagement and lifestyle marketing at Pandora. He's a marketing leader who has led engagement and retention campaigns for companies like Philo, EA, Activision, and so much more. Without further ado, let's bring it in. Where's my little video? Here we go. <music> Almar, welcome to the show. Hey, Steve. How is it going? Good, man. We got to meet in person yesterday at AGS. So shout out to Louis. Great job on the event. Amazing. But Almar, you know, I said it in the top of the, before I introed you, like I tend to focus more on the monetization side of things because I feel like, especially for subscription apps, that drives engagement. Do you have any counter to that? Feel free to disagree. I do actually, and Good. I understand that monetization, revenue, all these things are important. And especially if you're an early stage and you're looking to make sure you continue to get that funding, you need to present something to the board. You know, all, all these things online are all important to make sure that your your app stays top. You know, you're continuing to you know get those downloads. However, over time, and as you decide to scale your app and your subscriptions and whatever the business model is, it's going to get more expensive to acquire users. It's going to be harder as the audience broadens and you get out of the niche spot of where you are to, you know, kind of a more general population, you're going to have to keep those customers around. And, you know, this is where retention comes into play. You know, it's, it's going to be a lot cheaper down the road to keep the customers you have, keep them engaged, turn them into loyalists versus trying to find new folks, you know, out in the weeds, trying to acquire, uh, you know, different types of users. And, you know, as we know, advertising is expensive. So, you know, this is, this is kind of how I feel about that. Yeah. I like it. What are, what are some low hanging fruit, Almar, that you feel like most apps can adopt when it comes to helping them increase the engagement and likelihood that people will not churn? I mean, really, it's it's creating that relationship from day one. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the moment they raise their hand and they show interest in, you know, what it is that you are proposing to them, you should just go out there and making sure that you, you create that. And whether it be they click on an ad or they've actually downloaded and you know that they have it installed, don't let it sit there. You know, mm -hmm. dri drive that engagement, you know, create that relationship, start teaching them what to do, start showing them the features that matter. Uh, onboarding is a huge one. Um, yeah. You know that that is you know, something that people tend to hit and miss with. But you know, figure out the best channels to use. Figure out the best way to, you know, engage with those customers and get them using the app. And we talk about monetization at the top. Yep. Monetization is not going to happen if they're not using it. I mean, that's yeah. just that's just bar none. I like it. You know, one of the things I say is. And I could be wrong on this because I think the hardest thing to kind of fix is the trial to sub ratio, right? But yeah. one of the things I feel like with apps, they tend to just put users into like a home screen, home screen type of, type of thing where it's like paywall and then here's my home screen. And I'm like, what if it's like, let's just pick an example. I don't know, I have an example, M music, like, hey, what are your interests? And then you just take them directly to what you want to do. I got a better example, to-do list app, right? I downloaded a to-do list app. You, I see the paywall and then I see a dashboard with no to do's, no nothing, right? Yeah. Instead, why don't you get me to add a to do or what clear does really well, the clear to do list app is like get you to engage right off the bat and show you like, hey, swipe to delete, swipe left or right to hit it to do. So it's like lead the, like you said, the user journey, lead the user down the path of that first thing you want them to do. Yeah, and it could be done in a number of ways. Uh, you you know, push notifications usually come right out of the box with most messaging platforms. If mm -hmm. not, you know, build it into the app itself because you know, contextual messaging, uh, depending on the type of service that you're trying to promote, makes a ton of sense. You know, it, it's going to be difficult to if your monetization pieces are 
three or four clicks down just because that's the way the thing is designed you know how do you surface that faster so that way users get engaged earlier and more often and that's mm. really what's key i like it sorry i'm signing up for bendor so i can see <laughs> well i already have an account but i want to go ahead as a new user now Almar, when you're actually looking at new app and you know people for me i'm like i'll go heavy on the monetization side but yeah. when you're looking at a new app how do you go about reversing reverse engineering that user journey that we kind of mentioned i like to look at you know successful customers and you know how however the company defines that mm. you know you you figure out the features that matter the most and you know especially if the, the app has been out for a while you're going to have this kind of influx of folks that come into the beginning and let's say you're going from a trial to conversion you want to increase that conversion kpi you know what are those users doing in, during that trial stage what features are they clicking on you know what is getting them you know to do things you know outside of just making sure that they come back into the app um you know and this is something that we learned at at philo actually where you know all we had to do was make sure that once they downloaded the app it was a seven day trial once they download the app and you know we got them to come back and at least watch one thing they were more likely to convert to a paying customer now what happens after that get them to be you know a month two customer month three customer this right. is where that continued relationship you know keeps on going uh, so those are the kinds of things that you can start off with at pandora you know as another example we you know we saw driving thumbs was important making sure that you know less frequent users or folks that are less familiar you know knew how to seed their own algorithm you know the more mm. stuff you like that you know we know you like then hey we're going to keep giving you that stuff and then that's what creates the stickiness and that's what creates that really personalized music algorithm for you okay i'm trying to figure out the sliding thumb here so here finally signed up <laughs> i was like trying to figure out what new passwords all right i'm gonna allow yeah and oh I love yeah. yeah but all as right. you can see you know pandora does a really good job of making sure that you know we at least give you something right because as a new user you're not gonna have an yeah. algorithm you're not gonna yeah. you're not gonna know what you're listening to some people do it where they come in as a guest and yeah. they can search for an artist and it'll bring up a station and then there's going to be this kind of delayed create an account thing but you know if you're new you click on an ad you saw something you know oh beyonce just you know is, is in concert i want to hear her stuff i miss her stuff and i don't want to go to one of the competitors you know boom you sign up for for pandora and then we can you know make sure that we you know figure out the best way to get you there love it a couple of things i want to highlight too i love that love this little animation watch this let's see i'm gonna hit on ed sheeran and then it starts putting up more, you know, related artists too. You gotta touch on Taylor Swift. I love that little animation. I just feel like it, you know, adds these these little animations make me feel as a user like, oh, this is a good product. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's the whole thing. You know, it's it's all about the stickiness. It's all about making sure that you know we, you know, get your ears, you know, tuned in for as many artists and, and as long as you want. You know, that, that's another thing for you know most features. I mean, most um. Uh, services and things you know if you play if you listen to one artist you'll you'll yep. come back probably if you listen to two artists you're very more likely to come back you have three artists three favorites three stations that you really tag you know to tack onto mm -hmm. then you know we we've definitely got you hooked and that's that's really the goal i know the i like the the other thing i forgot to mention was like i like the fact that you allowed me to skip but it was very faint like i think a lot of people make it too obvious you know they put it right next to the call to action button skip right i had one client where their paywall had like a free monthly and yearly a big button that said free option guess what everybody's gonna collect of course free. You of know course I mean? yeah yeah and uh, you know that that's one of the things i mean you, know, you have to think about you know what you want your your users to do and you know make that apparent and you know, there you go um so this is how you know we this little thing huh mm -hmm. just this little pop-up yeah and it. what we do is we also reinforce that um through other messaging channels as well yeah i love how you just take it directly into the the music like boom it's going you guys can't hear it because i don't want copyright stuff but you know what i mean <laughs> like boom right there into the music yeah love it all right let's say hi to a few people too that are here thank you guys for joining live i do really appreciate it. kevin rudy david how's it going guys like clockwork kevin like clockwork yep kevin <laughs> says the same thing louis hola my friend and then joe good to see you locks me i think that's how i say it good to see you we got ireland in the house oh nice gizors i think that's how i say it sorry my romaine thank you my friend bonjour and then we got pat pj and then ollie haven't seen you in a while good to see you hey ollie 
and then tie fighter and almar background i guess that's oh uh, eagle eye love that yes that is a tie okay. fighter. <laughs> love all right all right Tawhid says i have two questions first does a hard pay paywall comply with apple rules second is it applicable is it acceptable to display two paywalls during onboarding will apple approve of this practice i can take this if you want or yeah i'll actually gonna kick it to you yeah I'll okay yeah so he so a hard paywall it depends on your reviewer i've seen a lot of big apps do a hard paywall and i think you'll be fine again it depends on your reviewer for the second question is it applicable to acceptable to display two paywalls Omar, that's what, what I've been saying is on the onboarding process, have your normal paywall, but if they X out of that, show a discounted offer like immediately because most people will buy, buy during that first time user experience. Yes, before they even use your app. And so, Tahid, if that if Apple rejects it, rejects it, you can do what Headway does and just have a little GIF icon that kind of floats and then people tap on that and then you get the pop-up. And that works just as well. So, hey, Joshua, that's an old name. Seen there, David Tommy, good to see you, my friend. And then Jody is here as well. Cool. I love the LinkedIn people. Okay. Nice. Now let's get into some of this stuff. Like if there's one thing, and I guess it's all app dependent, so it's going to depend on the different apps that you might be able to pull. But if there's one thing that users do after the post install, is there anything that you're like, hey, focus on this one thing? Because I'm going to say monetization, Almar, but like what is the one thing that you got to be focused on? And I'm going to counter that with uh, engagement. <laughs> I'm going to say engagement, engagement, engagement. And engagement yeah. can come in a ton of different flavors. It could be engaging with the marketing, the messaging, um, the onboarding, whatever it is. Um, it could be engaging with the app. You know, are, are we looking at uh, you know logins? Are are we looking at time on time on app? Are we looking at uh, you know those kinds of things? And yep. you know that to me again, you know that's what I mentioned earlier is if they're not even going to go into the app, how are you going to monetize them? Right. And, you know, how do we also sustain that? And especially for apps like games, right? So games at the very, very beginning of the onboarding process, or even as you're starting to play the game, you know, we're really trying to teach you the mechanics. We're trying to teach you how to, you know, shoot the thing or, you know, you know build your army, whatever it might be. And the monetization part comes in after you've invested or you felt like you've got enough levels or, you know, you, you're tired of waiting or watching ads or whatever. So, you know, but that, that stuff doesn't come unless, you know, we, we get you involved, you know, early and often. And, and that's, that's, uh, that's how I like to see things. You know, I'm going to agree with you. And I always think monetization, but part of monetization is engaging your users. It actually does help. You know, we talked to the headway PM, Yeva last week and she was talking about that that if you can get users to engage you can actually increase conversions because they're gonna feel like you're personalizing the entire experience for you for them and so i agree, agree with you omar like you gotta and you can see like pandora gets you right away into the app and you're listening to it you pick the engagement and then boom you're off and running and it's that initial engagement is so critical so that's what yevo was saying too like you can see this onboarding is just super long until you are finally hit with the paywall. Yeah. And, and one thing I do want to add, yeah. you know, and, and I, I, I don't mind necessarily the long onboarding. Sometimes, right. you know, the, the product is complicated. You may not want to bombard folks. I mean, we've seen numbers that, you know, they'll probably a lot of drop off happens within the first couple of days. Uh, so, you know, do we want to hit them with everything all at once? Maybe. I mean, again, this is where testing, understanding, you know, how, you know, what, what is driving, you know, the interaction, especially early on. And, you know, is it going to be three messages? Is it four? Is it, you know, is it going to be a push? Is it going to be an email? Yeah. Is it going to be within the app? Is it not? I mean, you know, these are all the things that you need to understand, you know, how the users are using the product. So that way, again, they stay engaged. And then, you know, if we need to hit them with that paywall, because that is, you know, when we need to do it, boom, do it, you know, but right. test it. I mean, you know, don't just throw it up there because then, you know, then you're saying, oh, why is everybody dropping off? Oh, look, this is where we introduced the paywall and everybody bails. Well, mm. now we know. Yeah. I like that. You know, one of the things that we did for a client of ours was it was a fitness app and he said, Hey, if I can get people to work out, you know, you, you said it earlier, you know, if we can list, get people to pick three stations or pick three artists, they're going to likely to stay on. If we can get people to work out. We're going to be good. And so we're really trying to focus on the trial to paid acquisition. And so we had an email campaign. Now, Mar, the, the thing I did was I just said in the second email, I was like, here's our most popular workouts. And then that 1.8x 2x the actual yeah. workout completion rate and that's it like lean on most popular fomo type of things too yeah and and, and that'll do it i mean now that you know that this <laughs> is what they're, they're interested in and they've gotten this far then 
you know, hit, hit them with, with worse. And I'm, I'm going to talk about a, a, yeah. a more established app. Um, and, you know, obviously everybody knows Starbucks, um, you know, but Ooh. Starbucks actually has an amazing app. And even if you hate Starbucks, I, you know, I, there could be Starbucks haters out there. I get it. But, you know, down, you know, and this is for your listeners, download the app, um, you know, and check out what they do. And, you know, I don't go there all the time, but, you know, they are really, really good in making sure that I stay engaged. Mm. It doesn't matter if the last time I bought a coffee was, you know, six months ago, they'll figure out a way to say, oh, here's his history. Here's what he's been doing. He still has the app on his device. I'm going to make sure that he gets hit up with, you know, so the, again, they're, they're, they've established that relationship. They're keeping that relationship and they understand, you know, how I interact with the app and, and tuning it to me. And, and this is where we can talk a little bit about how that personalization is, is amazing. Please. You want to keep, you have more to add to that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, obviously they, they know my drinks. They, they know what's <laughs> in my wallet. I mean, you know, it's almost, right. you know, we, there was a session yesterday, uh, you know, uh, at, uh, at AGS where we talked about personalization being a little bit too creepy, but if it's done right, then, you know, you are creating that relationship with, with your customers. And I think if it's done meaningfully and with purpose, then, you know, I don't think customers are going to find it creepy at all. If anything, they're going to be like, Oh, Hey, thanks. You know, I, I did leave that in my cart and I wasn't meaning to buy mm. that later. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad you, you, you brought that back. I saw an app recently that had my name on the call to action. It's like, Hey Steve, you know, here's your free trial. And I was like, yo, and I, I don't mind that. You know, we kind of like that almost like we love our own names. We love hearing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Although what's funny is that uh, when I worked in gaming, um, it was actually a big no-no. People would actually be referred by, they prefer to be referred to by their gamer tag. But, oh, you know, right. Yeah. That, the name thing was like, oh, okay, you guys are creepers. And then, then it gets on Reddit and everybody hates it. Yeah, I took a screenshot of my Starbucks. I, you know, one of the things I routinely do, Omar, I didn't think you'd bring it up, but I usually do these bonus starts. I'm like, hmm. They're like, exactly. you know, order these new drinks. And then they know what I'm used to ordering too. And then you get yep. bonus stars like, yeah, okay, I'll do that. And then it gets me to order more drinks and I'll I'll hit start on a lot of these things. Yeah, yeah. And and the thing is I understand that, you know, as obviously Starbucks is a ginormous company, billions right. of dollars. They've got, you know, folks that probably just work on the stars by themselves. But, you know, the practices that they employ, I think anybody can take that and and use that for their apps because really again, it is, you know, how do I feel like I'm creating that one-to-one -one relationship when it comes to the retention? So, you know, that way Starbucks doesn't have to go and find you again. Um, they don't have to send you an ad to say, oh, redownload this app. You know, you already have it. You know, you're going to keep it. It's, and then that's going to keep your cost low. And then, you know, that's the, the star thing. You know, you talk about monetization. They yeah. just got you to go in there, use the star to buy a cup of coffee, and you're paying more money. So that's, that's how they do it. I'm like, on this topic, like, is it as simple as, like, sometimes, like, having – users be because i'm thinking about one of our apps right and it's a sleep sound type of app and then retention our annual retention is 23 percent. we finally hit the year mark and we found that it's 23 percent, which is on average to all annual subscription apps but i was thinking as you were talking i was like maybe we need to add like more streaks right sometimes one of those where if i start a streak guess what i don't want to end it right i had a peloton streak for the longest time like since the pandemic it was like days like so many days but it ended up ending but anyways is it simple as that like can you think of other like simple things we can add that you found will actually help reduce churn yeah i mean I, again as simple as reminding folks that you're still there and and nudging <laughs> you know everybody and this works really really well when it comes to uh, you know, customers that have been around, you know, the idea is you don't want to get it to the point where you start to see them falling off uh, mm. because that that becomes harder. So, you know, you, you know, if you can build in some kind of gamification, you know, um, you know, uh, component. So that way they feel they feel like there's a streak and they, they don't want that FOMO. They may have them keep coming back, you know, let them let them do that. And we actually tested this. Uh, we were starting to test this um, within Pandora. Um, I did not get to see what the results of those tests were. But, you know, I believe if I remember right, it was it was encouraging um, that, you yeah. know, if we, you know, show, you know, kind of give people a streak and say, hey, you know, you're going to hit this streak. Um, shout out to the, you know, the data science team. Those guys were the smartest people that I knew. And they came up with this amazing concept and they wanted us to see if they, we, you know, we could eventually use it, uh, you know, to help us, you know, mitigate, you know, some of our potential churn, you know, as, as we saw that coming. Yeah. You know, I. I I know Pandora is different, but I like what here. I want to show this real quick because I wanted to just check out like what you guys did on second open. So I close the app and then boom, it's like automatically plays my station. 
it's like it you know a lot of the other apps music apps you kind of have a library or what's trending you just like boom here it is your music right off the bat yep 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 and we do this even if um you know you're clicking in from uh from like a from a push notification or an email you know we will deep link you right into the thing that you want to listen to and especially when it's something hot like you know earlier this year uh you know taylor swift's new album dropped you know that was a big one so we wanted to make sure that we were dropping people right in so that way they can start listening to stuff i love it hey one of the things exercise i want to do almar if you're game for it was i have an app you know the app i told you it's a sleep sounds app it's making about a hundred thousand a year organically but our annual churn is 23 percent. you know it's a very basic app and i know you don't know much about it and i don't want to share too much about the app either okay. but it's a very basic app in terms of helping you sleep you just hit play and you're going right okay. what what would you recommend like or what questions would you ask me to be like steve you know help me dissect how do i improve my annual so I'm like i'm i want to get it to let's say 40 percent. how do what what are, what are some questions you want to ask me about the app yeah i i mean you know churn is i would want to make well I, I think the first question i would ask is yeah who's making up this churn uh you know what does that audience look like Mm -hmm. um you know are they longtime customers are we seeing new folks that are coming in that are not sticking around um you know what what, what is the makeup of, of that of that percentage and then the other one depending on how much data that you have is how has the churn rate changed over time are so, we starting to see an increase is it going up is it going down and then more importantly you know how does this churn rate align with your engagement how does it align with your LTV? how does it align with your revenue so if we're starting to see a, an uptick in churn or if it's steady and revenue st is, is staying the same, probably no alarms just yet. That just means that this is kind of a steady state. Now, if we're starting to see revenue decline and churn is the same, that's a little bit of alarm bell. Now, if mm. churn's going up, revenue's going down, then it's like, you know, red sirens everywhere. Everybody, you know, stop what you're doing. We're, something's broken. We need to figure out what's going on. Mm. Um, and, you know, this is where you need to look at all these different lines. And then, you know, lastly, you know, do we even have anything in place to mitigate that churn? And, you know, that could not just be in the form of, of messaging and, and kind of intervention, but, you know, do you have the opportunity to, you know, put it, put in an offer? And I know that sounds as simple, you know, but not everybody can do that. And I understand it, it, it's, it's, it's difficult, um, you know, to build in an offer because you want to build it smartly. It also has to, you know, <laughs> you have to make sure that your CRO is okay with it. Um, you know, like all these things are, are, are factors in, in, you know, obviously, you know, all creating an offer, you know, putting out a discount, those kinds of things, you know, and those are things that, you know, can, can help mitigate churn. I like it. I know one of the things I've heard too, it's just like, you know, we did this with Pandora, it's just like the customization. So if you allow users to customize something within your app, right? Yeah. Build that playlist, so to speak, within Pandora, they're more likely to stay on because our app, as, as, you, as you were talking, I was like, okay, streaks potentially, but like, could I remember what they like and then i'm almost thinking like instead of like when they launch the app maybe just play it right off the bat like that simple thing might be good enough and then have that streak and then allow them to maybe even start customizing something within the app so we almost remember what they last played because there's yep. different sounds that they can play remember what they last played and just be like hey here you go again you know like we're just start with that same playlist so to speak yeah, and that was that was one of the tactics that we used was mm -hmm. if you know we knew that you were a longtime Pandora listener, we hadn't seen you in a while. Then you know one of the best ways to do that is to take one of the stations that you created and surface that to you to say, hey, remember this? You know that you that you did. It has some of your favorite stuff. You know, go back in and check out and see what's new, or um, and then hopefully that gets you back in. I like it. I like it. Romaine says, Almar likes Starbucks according to your mug. <laughs> you <got that>. <laughs> <laughs> yes um good catch. you got caught so, you got i got caught. caught i got caught i got caught i i i will i will confess that you know i'm that guy that everywhere i travel uh, you know i'll pick up a, a a mug you know i don't collect magnets i don't collect you know bumper stickers or anything weird like that i, I do collect stuff mm -hmm. so weird i love um, magnets <laughs> <laughs> Call, call me a capitalist. I guess that's what it is. <laughs> no, I, I love magnets. Every time we travel, I try to pick up a magnet in whatever city, place we're in, too. I love that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. David says, hey, I'm struggling with revenue in the UK, but in the US, it's going really well. I will run a new A-B test to set pricing, different pricing for the UK. Do you have any other suggestions what to do? What do you think, Omar? Um, I'm sure I'm 
Um, I mean, some of the things is, uh, and with some of the campaigns, I mean, is, is, are the campaigns tuned to folks in the UK? I mean, mm -hmm. those are things that if there's an opportunity to, uh, not just localize, but even culturalize. And I know, I understand the UK, we, they speak English, they, you know, the U S but if you think about how the culture works, it's very, very different. And so, you know, is there an opportunity there to not just, you know, A-B test, you know, or maybe that's what you're A-B testing, but, you know, I would say, you know, oh yeah, it's A-B testing pricing, but, you know, can you also A-B test, you know, so, some of the marketing, some of the copy, um, you know, you know how, how you engage, um, you know, with, with, uh, with the users there and, and see if that makes a difference. Yeah, I like it. And David, if you can share the app, I would love to take a peek at it too, but I think I agree with that too. And I think pricing is something you're going to have to test. You know, it is, there's a, what is it called? The big Mac rule where you can try to figure out the localization aspect of it. So are you charging too much? And David, I'm actually doing this because we, we used to get pretty good revenues from Japan and now we don't. And I was like, we've lowered the price that didn't work. I was looking at what the competitors charge. So I think it's, um, it's almost like a pricing test. I don't know if there's anything you could say on the paywall that would make a difference culturally too, but like, yeah, look at the price. It might be priced too high in the UK. Although I wouldn't think so, but like, you never know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think there would be, there, there might be other ways to see, you know, where that, that fall off in, in revenue is happening. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I'd I'd love to dig in deeper personally. I have a person. I have I have a guess on what you're going to say to this question. Romaine says, "How important is email marketing in a retention strategy?" I think it has to be baked in. Um, you know, we just have to make sure that, uh, and especially today. I mean, we as on the marketing side, we understand you know the privacy stuff, and you know everybody knows about what Apple's doing, and and you know all that. And so you know, email marketing is probably it's 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 old. It's old school but it's tried and true. And it is the one way that we know that we have the correct information. And even if they decide to delete the app, even if they decide to turn off push notifications, if we have your email address, there's still a way for us to reacquire you and not have to pay, you know, tons of money to, you know, find you somewhere else uh, yeah. because we know who you are. We know what you've possibly done and we know where you were. Uh, in that in, in your life cycle when you decided to disengage. So how do we re-engage you? And it doesn't have to be super complex. Um, you know, just make sure that you are keeping track of that. Make sure you're able to market to them, especially if you're in the in, in the in the EU that you know your your GDPR and all your permissions and all that are set. Um, and then California CCPA and all that good stuff. But yeah, um, bake it in. You know that 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 to me is a, that should be part of it. Yeah. And Romain, you know, one of my friends did this and all they did was he didn't actually need your email address for you to use the app. He had a little pop up that said, you know, want to register, blah, blah, blah. And you yep. can X out of that. And then if they X out, fine, no harm done. But if they X in, he used that. And so it's a great way to just you can get started with like MailChimp or any different platform. Just have a little pop up that says, hey, you want to sign up for our app? And let them skip and if they skip that's fine but if they don't you have that email and that you don't even need account creation in my opinion Omar. you just need yep. to grab their email address kind of like you know what i try to do on my website too to grab email addresses yeah and and you know we talked about you know the the pop-up and you know putting a paywall and, and all that kind of stuff you know if you're not doing it especially if you you do have a you know let's say you are able to put up that second paywall you know make sure that there's an email address in there because if they decide not to move forward get their information um so yeah. this way now you can build up a database of folks that you will eventually you know figure out how to target i've got a couple of questions on email first though the one thing i want to say is you know these e-commerce brands like timu right they're like they help you spin the wheel and like hey you saved 45 percent, so now they're engaging when almar says get people to engage with the app me spinning the wheel and then secondly you say 40 percent want to get that coupon code then what do you have to do you got to give them the email might be an interesting idea. I don't know, Omar. What do you think? Bad idea? Good idea? We used to do this all the time. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, because, you know, that to us was essentially, you know, um, a, you know, a free acquisition in the sense that, you know, you gave us your email address and it, it doesn't have to be that high. It could be as little as 10 percent, 15 percent, you know, because, you know, that's, all, you know, again, it, make sure that's baked into what you were trying to do. You know, it's basically just the cost of acquisition. But I guarantee you a 10 percent discount is going to be way cheaper than trying to find them on Facebook. And it may not even be a match, you know, as an example. You get you get points for this, okay. Oh, oh, oh okay, I didn't realize we were doing lightning round here. I'm, I'm, I'm I love it, kidding. I love it. Oh, the, what was I gonna say? Do you remember, you know, what I shared with um, my client, 
you know, here's our most popular workouts. Do you remember a subject line or an email campaign that you ran at your previous companies that you're like, that really helped with engagement, brought the users back on? Uh, with email, and I, th I think it actually depends on what you're trying to get them to do. Um, you know, obviously with companies that deal with content, uh, Philo, Pandora, getting an artist name right in there will usually almost automatically get folks to at least open it and figure out what, you know, what the heck this is. Um, you know, that's important. Uh, for me personally, I love to test call to actions. Mm. So that way you can get, you know, what, what you want them to do. And this, this, this could also be with push notifications as well. You know, you know, the, you, a lot of, especially if you use, um, if you have an Android, you know, you can have a compressed version, you could expand it, you know, you can have, you know, kind of the quick 20 second elevator pitch right then and there in the, in the, in the headline and then in the sub, you know, and then the expanded copy, then you can say, oh, here's more and kind of what that detail is, but, you know, hook them, tell them, tell them what you want them to do and just get them to do it. Because, you know, you see sometimes these super long, too many words, it kind of runs over the, you know, or it wraps around on your phone and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm not clicking on that. That's, that's, that's too much going on. Yeah. I love it. I love, you know, yeah, leveraging an artist or a popular brand name in your subject lines. And then secondly, the, you know, most popular or you're going to last chance, these type of things, the FOMO type. And then the last email subject line that tends to work really well are a couple of things. One, do you hate me? Right. If you're trying to engage <laughs> and then two, you're not alone. Those will always get you good open rates. Now, how you do it, them um, run with it at your own, you know, what I, I'm not feeling well. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but you know, those are great subject lines and don't, don't try to scam people using those subject lines is what yeah. I'm trying to say. But definitely test them, test them yeah. and make sure you test them, test things that are different enough. You know, right. make, you know, don't say, Oh, would you like to, or should you like to, I mean, that, you know, come on, nobody's <laughs> going to care, you know, make sure that they're, they're, they're vast enough that you can actually measure a difference and okay, we're going to go in this direction, not this direction. And by the way, I, I want to touch on what you mentioned, the FOMO thing that is also a good one we did use that at molecule molecule for folks that don't know we make uh what they used to make air they still make air purifiers mm. and you know especially when wildfire season was happening a little bit opportunistic but at the same time true protect your family you know make sure that you know the the air you breathe is is, is clean uh, you know that kind of stuff so we would put that stuff in our in our subject lines and, and and whatnot to make sure that people don't feel like they're breathing in smoke if you live in a fire area all right, Judy says, thanks for the tip. We're going to share that point, all right? And then Romain says, active campaign is more expensive. What would you say is better and why? Do you have a favorite email marketing tool? Uh, they, well, I mean, I, I've been mostly on the smaller to larger enterprise size, so I'll speak to those. Yeah. Um, but uh, Iterable has been, and you know, shout out to the Iterable team that, that was uh, there both at uh, Molecule and at Pandora, who helped us with our with our Stitcher product. Um, amazing. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that is available out of the box. You know, again, it's not pricey, but you know, if you are short on engineering resources, implementation, all of that has to come into play. You know, Iterable is, is, has a lot to offer from the get go. So would, would push for that. But as Steve mentioned, you know, there are other solutions, MailChimp and some of these other guys that, you know, Tend, you know, they could be free up to a certain point. You know, obviously, as you scale, you're going to have to start paying for some of these features to be able to manage, you know, databases and, and users and features, you know, have more features within the emails and things like that. But um, yeah, I mean, one of the things that you know I had mentioned too is build that into your marketing plan. You know, if you can't spend it now, that's okay. I, I, I get it. But you know, you have to, and if it's expensive, you know, put it out a year. You know, put it out two years, but build it into the plan. Because I guarantee you to try to retrofit that because you're like, oh my God, now we have a bazillion people coming in. I don't know how to manage all these users. How do I make this all work? If you try to Frankenstein stitch that together, it's going to be more costly than if you had budgeted for that and allotted for that, you know, early on. Yeah, I like it. I mean, there, I would say MailChimp, I mean, just get started really. Like you can get started for free. And as you scale up, you know, you can always, it's not hard in my opinion, unless you have like, drip campaigns already set up it's not hard to switch over i personally use convert kit that's what i use but i've you know i have clients that use mailchimp so find one that is affordable 
that makes sense for you in the very beginning. And then switching is it's a simple export and then putting it in as long as you don't have automated campaigns, then you're stuck, right? <laughs> Once you're stuck, but I've had clients use a bunch of different ones. I think the main thing I'm looking for is deliverability because I found that the cheaper ones, and I won't name names, but the, I have switched over to the cheaper ones. They don't have great deliverability and convert kit MailChimp. They should all have great deliverability. Yeah, and 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 Google especially um, recently uh, has been, or I don't know, let me pull that back. <laughs> Spam House, um, you know, Google is one, you know, Gmail is one of the bigger clients. Spam House, you know, they they the ones that kind of manage all that stuff. You know, they've been more recently kind of clamping down on stuff, and especially from free email clients like Gmail and whatnot, um, just because you know they're trying to manage you know all this you know, permissions and making sure that people feel like their their privacy is being respected. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Ali says, how do you build trust with your customers, especially in the fintech space? Ooh, that is, I, I think for that one is you, you definitely don't, don't lie, <laughs> you know, <laughs> be, be upfront with what you're asking them to do. Um, and I think this is also where onboarding, you know, is, is important. Um, because, you know, if, if they feel like anything is fishy, um, especially in the setup, then, you know, this is where, you know, you, you know, you can run into some issues. So I'll, I'll have to admit, I'm not as familiar. I haven't been in the FinTech space, um, for quite some time, but building trust amongst customers, you know, is just, you know, that that's, that's a basic thing that we need to do in, in retention. Mm -hmm. Um, and so making sure that, you know, if you are going to be emailing, messaging somebody that you do have their permission, um, if you're a brand new FinTech app and they can't recall where they downloaded you or they don't remember um you know using the app then it's gonna they're gonna call you spam or they're gonna you know they're gonna stop using you because they're like oh what is this i don't remember what this is so this goes back to you know the early engagement and making sure you create that relationship early on yeah ali i'll add to that the trying to get this is where press i don't always believe in press because i'm like sometimes you know we've gotten on tech crunch and all these stuff sometimes it doesn't really translate to actual downloads so Maybe that's where you start thinking about press just to add the social proof. If you can say, you know, we've been featured in TechCrunch, all these publications, then it helps build that social proof. The other thing I like to do if I'm starting out is borrow social proof. And so if I'm building out a sleep sounds app and I've Googled the, these type of sounds are proven to help you sleep better, then I'm going to borrow some of that social proof too. And so in the fintech space, if you're building something based off of what other people have said, that is like interesting. You can borrow a quote from, I'll just throw out stupid names, but like Elon and be like, all right, Bill Gates, you know, you can borrow some of those quotes and then incorporate that. And that sort of builds that trust and social proof within your app. Yeah. And, and to add to that, you know, the other thing that you can do is, and, and I, I love that, Steve. And, you know, what you can also do is add, if, if you are doing email campaigns, you know, build, you know, build, continue to build that brand equity and become an expert in the space or, you know, kind of one of those folks that, you know, like, Hey, you know, we're seeing, you know, I'm not sure what your product does, but, you know, give us, you know, a tidbit about the product or some kind of smart stat and, you know, link it to, as Steve mentioned, you know, a legitimate article, wall street journal, something along those lines. And then you can tie in, well, here's how my app addresses this need. And so, you know, this way you're, you're showing that, you know, you are an expert in the space and this is how, you know, we are filling the gap, you know, with our service. You know, one of the things I like to tell Omar, as you're talking, I mean, we're just rolling here. So the, whoops, one of the things, like this is my, one of my favorite websites. I'll just look for stats. Oh yeah. Right? Oh, I, I use I'm it just, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like stats on FinTech. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to find, but this is what I'll, I'll just do. And I'll just go, all right, what are some stats? And it's just like, cool. Now I have a reputable source. I don't have to find it. Uh, you know, you can Google it too, but then you can start leveraging that into some of that trust symbols too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, you want to check your sources, make sure, but um, yeah, usually it's, uh, yeah, st Statistica is pretty, is pretty good. I, I've used them a lot to kind of make my case, especially with product teams. Wow. This is amazing. That's multiple points. Oh, we're not going points anymore. We're going applause. All right, Ali. <laughs> Ooh. Nicely done. All right. And then Jody loves it too. All right, cool. Let's get into the app audit side of things. And if you guys want us to take a look at your app in a future live stream, we'll just go check out appmasters.com slash audit. Or if you want to sit down with me for an hour, well, same, same URL, appmasters.com slash 
audit. And I like to start off every app audit with some dad jokes. All right, Almar, you're the guest. I think the first one is at a disadvantage. That's my guess. So I will go first if you're okay with it. Please, please. Okay. All right. I don't know if there's a disadvantage. My daughter sent this to me, so I'm going to give that. And we've got, I've got one. Almar has two. All right. All right. Let me scroll up. I was like, can you please text me some? Okay, here we go. Ready to go. Okay, I'm just add jazzing the people up. All right, all right. You know, all right, Almar, we're close by. Why did the chicken hide? Why did, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I screwed it up. <laughs> no. Okay. Why did the egg hide, Almar? Why did the egg hide? Because he was a chicken? How dare you? It was a little chicken. Oh. There you go. I was close. You did give it away, though. So that, yeah. that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right, right, right. I'm ready. Right. I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Um, having been at Pandora, love music. What is the geologist's favorite genre of music? What? Rock. There you go. Rock. I like it. All right. Put A if you thought Almar's joke was better. Put S if you thought my joke was better. And then Ali said, thanks a lot, Steve, for asking my question and that amazing insight. Thank you, Almar, for the amazing advice, too. You're and welcome. Great job. And then so we're going to take a look at Jorge's app. I'm going to pull that up real quick. Jorge's app is called, for those who just listen to the podcast, Scene Spot. It's called Scene Spot. It's a trip planner. I don't know why he has shorts in here, but okay. And then travel videos, itinerary. He wants help with ASO, but anything you see on the screenshots or app store present side, Almar, that you want to give him feedback on? Yeah. I, I think the first question is, you know, how did you decide what screenshots are going to be there? Uh, you know, you know, we talked about, you know, product, product engagement and, you know, those features. And, you know, if you want folks to really get engaged, go deep into the product. Are these the things that actually do it? I mean, yeah. you know, that, that to me is always key. And, you know, so, you know, will this lead to conversion? Is this what those successful customers are, are clicking on? So that, that's number one. And I think the only other thing that I'm, let me need one sec here to look at this. Um, I, I think making sure that the screenshots match the title. So you know, I think for the first three, at least for me, it looks great. I'm not quite sure I get the fourth one. Um, you know, yeah. says, you're your friends, Rex. I, you know, what, you know, what, if I, if I got to the screen, what am I supposed to do? And so, right. you know, it, it, I'm not, I'm not getting the immediate value props. So I think those at least right off the top of my, um, and then as you kind of move forward, um, yeah, here? yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's kind of, it's kind of the same thing. Actually, I think, yeah, I think the rest of them, yeah, again, but you know, this is where you can, you know, test this out. You know, either move them around, move the order around, right. you know, and then definitely, you know, depending on, on, on the product feature itself, then, you know, making sure that it lines up and, you know, it, it's, it's the experience that people will get as they, you know, decide to download the app. I mean, look, they say TikTok meets TripAdvisor. And I get that. Like, immediately I understand what you mean. And so I love using this type of phrasing when I'm trying to explain my product. And so I would try to put that in there, Jorge, as much as possible. From an, So, like, your screenshots need help. I don't know if it's going to be like critical at this point, because if you don't have any downloads, what's the point? You need data, you need some downloads from an ASO standpoint, like look at what some of the competitors doing, because I think trip planner would be extremely hard to go after, but like there is keywords around, like, you know, one of the apps I use is visited because I just want to know what countries I've visited. And so I'll pull up an app like this and then I'll click this. I'm on app follow, by the way, click this little eye icon. And what app follow will allow me to do is just do some extensive keyword research. And so don't go after the big guys if you do. And I'm just going to assume you don't have a lot of money for marketing because, you know, you reached out to me and you only have six ratings. But the you got to find the niche keywords that are there. And then maybe because it's a travel planner, think about the top travel destinations. They tend to have lower competition for those. And so maybe there's one that you can find that's Bali, Paris, you know, Italy, all that stuff. And those might be good keywords that you can try to go after. And you might not want them in the U S localization, but maybe in your Spanish, Mexico, that helps the U S or different localizations. You put them in, in other places. So it looks like it's only available in the U S which is crazy. You can make this available everywhere. So that's yeah, Spanish. I, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I'll just finish this thought. So that Spanish Mexico trick, 
that I've talked about here, you know, for days, it does work even if your app is not available in Spanish in anywhere else. So as long as you put that localization, it'll still get indexed for you. All right. Oh, and I was just going to tell you know, you, 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 I love those points, Steve. And the other thing, you know, and I, I meant to mention this uh, before that too is, you know, you, you type in travel videos, itinerary, IRL. And, you know, I, I think for mm -hmm. us that are in the space, we you know IRL, but, you know, is that something that you'd want people to search against? I mean, I know it's in the title and, you know, not necessarily the keyword, but, you know, you know, other things to think about because that may not be, you know, the best use of this space. You know, is there, is there something else that, you know, we can use that would make more sense, especially as you're trying to get folks to, to come in? Um, you know, are, are we allowed to talk about competitors and other like, apps and things that I've Go want? for it. Yeah. So, you know, an app that I actually I got turned on to is, uh, is an app called Kluke. Um, mm -hmm. They are based in. I How do you think, spell that? Um, I think it's K L O O K. Okay. Um, you know, so I found them, you know, kind of by accident because I was looking to, you know, buy some tickets uh, when I was in Japan recently, and I couldn't spend money on a Japanese website because they wouldn't take, um, they wouldn't take my card. So you know, I ended up, uh, you know, going through them as a third party and it was amazing. So, you know, travel, they do a lot of everything. I think they focus on mostly you know, Asia and, and Australia and, and those kinds of countries, but you know, they're not in your space necessarily. Um, so, you know, you can check them out and see if there's anything you can pull for this to kind of, you know, you know help out. Yeah. I like it. And you don't, you might not need ASO, Jorge, honestly, like there were some keywords that I found, but you also might not yet need ASO, like places to be in, you know, travel journal. So, you could try it, but you can might also need, you know, like a TikTok campaign or something that's different because ASO is just one part of the marketing channel. It's not the end all be all, and it doesn't have to be the, the only thing that you focus on too. Okay. Oh, Mark. Well, on to more important things. The results of the first round, uh, Luis gave you the win. Jody gave you, said rock. Thanks Jody. Really good. <laughs> Patrick gave you, and then Romaine and Sam gave me. Oh, uh, Romaine. So you win by three, Romaine, two. Sam, Dang on. it. Come on. <laughs> All right. You got another one? Round two, baby. So I All guess right. it doesn't matter the order. Okay. Is it me? You want to go first? I don't care. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll, I will. Uh, why don't lions eat clowns? Why? Because they taste funny. Okay, I like it. Omar, you know, before the crowbar was invented, was invented, the crows had a drink at home. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, that got me. <laughs> <laughs> so, but S, oh, yeah, they're here up around two, so I know. There you go. Oh, wait, I know what's, okay, we got the next app that I want to highlight, and that's Akshay has this app, the dog identifier app, which I, Kind of dig, but Akshay says our app is new. We want to promote the app and increase downloads. We also love feedback on the app itself. Okay. Anything you want to highlight here? Uh, let's see. Dog identifier, AI dog scanner. <laughs> and then I feel like AI is the next domain. Yeah, my... I, I can see why throwing, you know, the dog there. Dog identifier. I mean, maybe it's just the, the marketing person in me, but you know, I'd I'd love to maybe something more that feels less CSI <laughs> and maybe something a little bit more fun <laughs> as far as the name yeah. of the app. And I, I don't know how 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 big the, that that is, right. but um, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I can see that you know being helpful to tell people what the app does, but you know, and especially if you are trying to optimize it against search and things like that. You know, having dog in there is going to be, there's going to be a lot of that. So, um, so that, that's the one thing. And I do love that there are lots of dogs in, in the screenshots. So that is, yep. that's important. I think, yeah, I think that one, that's, that's a nice, that's a good hit. Um, I know, I know screenshots are not that important on Google Play, but like what I would try to do is not tilt them like, People love dogs, so make them big, make them bold, yeah. make them the star of your screenshot. And then I would play around with the icon because in the search results of Google, you can go into the app. But you can icons is the 
very first thing that we see on Google, whereas Apple, we see screenshots too. And so icons ah. become really important on Google Play for you to A-B test. And I don't like this. Again, highlight the star, which is the doggy, the puppy. Yeah, the other thing I would probably call out is, you know, and, and this is just something that we, this is something we always talk about, you know, when I put together campaigns or why we do something or what, what's going to be the, the thing is, you know, in, in the about, you know, and then this will take a little bit of reading and you probably have to get down to that part, but what's the, so what, I mean, why, why should I do this? You know, what's, where's, can you give me a, a, a value prop of why this would be important? You know, summarize it in a, in a sentence or two. And I think that would definitely, you know, help out some people who are like, oh, okay. It's not just identifying the dog, but this is, you know, valuable to me as a dog owner, as a potential dog owner, X, Y, Z. So, you know, that, I feel like that, that would be, um, you know, that, that would help me out, especially if I'm looking for a new dog, um, you know, yeah, it, it, it could be useful. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So like uh, one of the things I know on the Google play and what we're testing, and we've seen pretty good results with this is Google, you need, I think you need a million downloads. So that's the problem right here, but I'm hopefully they will uh, open it up more, but there it's called promotional content in google play and it's the same thing as in-app events on ios but if you put the right keywords you can see i put dog on it for our app and all these other apps show up because you know it's limited yeah. to the big guys right now exactly. but you want to put that in there and then maybe you just copy something like this so th we get the scan part but you know like something that tracks like this this is more appealing that catches my attention out of all these apps so like something like this really gets my attention and you could put like a, a monocle. Is that what it's called? The little Sherlock Holmes type of thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. In there too. So like what you said. All right, here's the app. Let's get into the app, shall we? All right, welcome to Dog Eye. Yeah, again, what Almar said. Like, lead with the benefit. Like, I like that it's like, okay, hey, it's a dog in front. But you're just telling me the features, use camera or photo from the gallery to identify. Like, that's what I figured, but, like, that seems obvious. <laughs> Maybe it's not worth explaining, but why would I want to do that? But, okay. Mm. Let me... Oh, eBay. Oh, it just said they need access to my camera. I was oh, thinking that it would pop up. Okay. Maybe you should take a picture of my dog right here. All right, puppy. Oh. It's not a good scan. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Uh, You know what would be cool, Omar? I don't know. Like during the onboarding, maybe even just have like pictures of dogs and then it's like sort of scanned for me and it tells me that, hey, this is, you know, the type of dog you have. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, if you can bake it in. Oh, I guess it's, 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 it's showcasing. Did it actually figure it out? Well, she's half pug, half chihuahua, but it's probably not a good picture. <laughs> she's like. Yeah. Down. So, so, you know, going back to the onboarding, you know, and they, if eventually if they can bake that into that part of it, you know, how to take a good picture. I mean, those, mm. those are the things that they actually teach you what to do. And, you know, th that's kind of basic in most folks and most um, apps that require photos, you know, they actually give you a little, even, even if it's not a, a whole onboarding, even just a couple of instructions, you know, make sure there's good light, you know, you get that picture of the front, you know, something along those lines. So that way, and, and I don't know if that was actually part of that um, when you were doing the capture screen. So I'm not been that already. Yeah. And I think, uh, okay. The way they're trying to monetize is through ads. It looks like one used, which I don't mind. I think one of the things you can do is try to have that paywall still. I know that Android conversions are going to be low regardless. And we did help one app, you know, help with uh, increasing his Android conversions. And we're tr in the middle of helping another because I just want to get better at the Android side of things. But I would try to put that paywall anyways. And one thing you can do, Akshay, is what we've seen work well with games is like, give them, let them know that, hey, you get five free predictions for free. Do you want 10? Let them double it right on the onboarding and watch that initial video. I personally would prefer that video ad versus you trying to put an interstitial ad in between. So it's a great way. We've seen it work really well for games. Anytime we've implemented that, we've seen a boost in ad revenues. So just let them know, hey, welcome. You get five free. And then it gives me that dopamine hit. You want to double it? I get now 10. I'm more likely to double it. 
Yeah, and if you wanted to bake in some gamification, and again, this could probably be a bigger plan, you know, taking more pictures of dogs, you know, like saying, oh, you've, you know, you've got two, you're becoming, you know, a dog expert, you know, <laughs> something mm -hmm. along those lines. And then as you start to approach, you know, more and more, either they're going to get the more eyeballs, so that way, you know, the ads can start to monetize themselves, or, you know, if you're trying to break through that paywall, it's like, oh, to your point, Steve, hey, you know, oh, you, you know, you're only two away from becoming an expert, you know, jump, jump that hoop really quick, you know, here, here's the, and then boom, you know, you hit them with a, with a paywall message. I like it. All right. On to more important things. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, he's like, all right, we, I've, I've officially lost, but I don't know if I have a sound effect. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. I would like that. That's what I want to do. Is this it? No. Oh, there you go. All right, I officially lost. I owe you dinner, Almar. Next time I see you, it looks like you got two, three, three. I think we're tied right now, but Jody came in. All the end votes are all you. So you get the win. Jody says, my app is called Hire and Fire Kids. We'll reach out if that's okay. Of course, I don't know who you're talking to, but we're both okay with you reaching out. But that sounds interesting, Hire and Fire Kids there. So, Jody, that sounds interesting. Yeah, that caught my attention. Yeah, <laughs> good name for the app. Yeah, Might be it. a chore, chore <laughs> tracker, but whatever it is, you know, you let us oh, know. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Omar, anything I missed that you want to make sure we end with in terms of retention, engagement, all that jazz? Uh, I think the only thing, and you you hear this from marketers everywhere, but um, you know, I will, you know, have folks walk away with again baking your retention plan. You know, I think that's important. You know, and and again, it doesn't have to be sparkling clean. Doesn't have to be you know sea level ready, but just know that that's going to be a part of the flow because you can't live on a great product itself. You know, I mean, that is a start. But you're going to have to sustain that over time, especially as your audience broadens. And this is where retention and churn prevention and, and building that relationship comes in. And then the second part of that is keep testing. And this is what we all talk about. You know, test everything. You know, if you're looking to optimize, you know, your, your app search, test that. And, and, and again, you know, I know we're trying to look for, uh, you know, making sure that you get enough downloads to be able to see, you know, the kind of that um, that behavior. But you know, when you can, you know, test out those screenshots, test out, you know, the, those value props test out those push notifications, you know, everything, you know, that way you'll know what's working for your customers. It'll continue to build trust because then those messages continue to resonate and more importantly, things will get better. Yeah. I almost feel like you should always test out the first thing. If I haven't found product market fit and you know, I'm not making that much money, but I'm getting downloads like to David's question, like test the onboarding. I feel like onboarding is the yep. key thing. Get engagement, yep. like Almar said, and then test your paywall, copy prices, all that stuff. Because that's the most important thing, in my opinion. Almar, so feel free to disagree, but like you yep. know, I feel like onboarding. Hundred percent. I love it. Let's give him yep. a round of applause. So if you guys want to connect with Almar, his LinkedIn is in your favorite podcast app, YouTube description, wherever you assume con content, it's going to be linked up and you can connect with them that way. Almar, if the audience wants to connect with you in any other way, do you want to send them anywhere else? Yeah. You can also just email me directly, um, okay. you know, almar.reyes at gmail.com, you know, happy to, you know, help out, consult, you know, you know, get folks, you know, started, you know, would, would love to, uh, love to see uh, what, what I can do for you if, uh, if there's something there. So, and I got to give a shout out to my team at Pandora. I mean, those guys are D, Jared, Tyler, Sean, Sophie. Those guys, they're the smart people behind me. They made everything. You know, D was my manager. And yeah, yeah. amazing, amazing, amazing team. They're still there. So, yeah, this all this stuff is, you know, like, yeah, I, I owe a lot to them. So. We'll give them a couple points yeah. to all those guys. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, next week, we're going to talk to Lomit Patel, who wrote the book called, he, he's been a past guest, past guest of I but Lean AI. And then we're going to talk all about the full funnel marketing. He's been a growth leader. He's been at Tinker, Roku, Texture, InView. And so he's a really great guy and he does great speaking everywhere. And so we're going to talk to him next Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific and every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific. I love those shares. So if you guys are watching this on the big screen, I love those. Tag me anywhere you can. I love seeing it. It's pretty scary, but thank you guys. And then Louis says, gracias, Steve. Hope you feel better. I feel good. I don't sound good, but I feel good. Almar, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on, man. Next time, dinner's on me. But thank you, thank you so much. No, this has been great. Thanks, everybody. And I yeah, really appreciate it. All right, guys. I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Bye.